Okay, in the classes lectured cylindrical shells, we didn't finish everything that I have in the lecture packet. Most of it because of time. It takes so much to understand the fact that when you're doing a cylindrical shell and you have a region like this uh, upside down parabola, and it is spinning around the, this case, it's an x equals to a, a negative 1. You are producing uh, a circular pattern. And so, to the naked eye, all anybody sees is this uh, solid. But when you look down from the top, what you see is that solid that we were looking at from the side actually has a hole in it. And that hole even has, it's not even a straight, uh, that cylinder that's inside that hole is not even a, a true cylinder. The cylinder probably, if you were to pull out the hole, it probably looks like that if you could pull out the hole. Okay, so each of those pieces of the hole in itself is a disc. And then that gives you, as you go down, that gives you that, that hole radius there, but it changes. The outside radius basically is giving you the radius to the edge of this mold here, all the way around. That radius from here, that radius there. And that also changes, okay? That radius change there, but that is your big radius. And the hole has a smaller, that one went too far, that hole has a smaller radius, which was even smaller here, and the hole up here has the largest radius. But we don't look at it as disks. We're looking at that I'm dropping down uh, a cylinder with the center being that axis, that I'm dropping down this cylinder that is basically hollow so i it's theoretical to think that the duplicate side of that cylinder is over here so the only thickness that i'm dropping down is it's like a hollow paper towel tube is the wall of this cylinder has volume because the wall of that cylinder when I pull that cylinder and cut it and, and make it into this rectangular piece, the wall of that cylinder does have thickness. The thickness of that wall, in this case, since it's a vertical cylinder, is a dx. So normally when you rotate it around a, a vertical axis, you had to solve all your functions for uh, x, but not in this case, I don't have to, because since the wall's a dx, I'm talking about that cylinder right there. Now, if I drop down another cylinder in here, by the way, we'd cut that cylinder off at the top here. If I drop down another cylinder, I'm gonna try to make it as close, you know what, I'll zoom in on it. That way, let me do this. Let me zoom on it. So what I'm drawing is really close. will look like it's next to it. I'm dropping down this cylinder wall. This is why I didn't finish the lecture in class, because I'm doing too much uh, talking. Then the counterpart is on the other side of 
the cylinder that was there. So that is the other side. Dropping down the wall. Dropping down the paper tube. Okay, so there it is. There's that wall. Now, in reality, the let me erase the excess that I mentioned a minute ago. This is just in the oh. This is just in the air. And this blue one, well, both of them actually. We erase that. Erase that. Let me erase that. Same thing on this side. Let me erase all of that. And I'm going to use red to simulate this blue ended on the function here ends on the function here. So there's the empty paper towel. And then the, the one that was in black, I'll keep it in black. The black one, I didn't know it was that far out. I don't, let me uh, clean it up. Just for argument's sake. Try to make it as close to the, there, that one. So it's a little taller. So there is that paper towel. So when you unzoom out, what you're seeing is two paper towel almost, almost touching. One's taller than the other because the function, see, when I zoom in, I realize that I, I went too far with it. The paper towel ended, oh, not erasing anymore. The paper towel stopped there. Blue one stopped there. So, again, the red one is higher. I did it wrong color. The red one did it up to here on both. So, as I said, that paper towel is bigger than the blue one, which is only to here. So I imagine a whole bunch of paper towel pieces in there. And the farther you go out, there's another one out here, you see. And I can go out farther even again, make that one out here, you see. Whole bunch of cylinders in there. These walls, when you add them up, these thickness of the walls, when you add them up, creates a solid as because you're going to go all the way to where the function stop right in here. So, all right. Do I want to talk more about this blank one or move on? Let me move on to the actual problem isn't there yet. Let me scroll problem. Well, no, the yeah, start with a simple problem. Okay. So we have this red line tells me that you're creating cylinders that are going around the x-axis. So I should have, if I could just figure out how to copy that picture. I'll pause my recording and try to copy this picture. Okay, I managed to figure it out. So here I'll take this picture and put it over here. Ah, yeah, that looks a lot better. Yeah, I like it. Of course, it's upside down. Everything that's okay. So as that cylinder goes around, those particular horizontal black lines I made, there's the cylinder. But you don't see much uh, material being used because it's at the very top. But if I go to that one, you can see there's more material there. But you're still seeing a cylinder going around. And from the top, you're still seeing this. When I say top, it means looking at it from the, the right, if I was to sit it back up. 
okay? Now, any cylinder, let me draw it straight up. One, one of those slices, one of those slices will have uh, the height of this cylinder is right here. And what I did is I, I cut that cylinder. What I did is I cut it and I unwrapped the the piece, the material that I have. So it's like any other cylinder. This becomes the long part when I unwrap it. And it's made up of the circumference of the circle. 2 pi r. And that's the height of that cylinder. In this case... The height is equal to the distance between these two functions. And since it's going uh, around, it's this function minus this function. Well, that function was uh, x equals to y squared. And the reason I need it solved for x is because the, th the thickness of this cylinder is a dy. The thickness of that wall is a dy. So I need my functions also to have y's in them. So I will be able to integrate it with respect to y. So the height is y squared minus zero. So in this case, the height is y squared. And R in this case, the R of this is dependent on how far up I go on the, in this case, the y-axis. So R is just a particular y value. So that changes into 2 pi R. The thickness, I already mentioned, the thickness here. The thickness is from the dy. So my volume of that rectangular prism is uh, um, length of that rectangle, which is 2 pi r, and r was my y, and my the width, I'll call it the height, it's also in a rectangle, you would call it the height, is y squared, and the thickness is my, my third dimension of a rectangular prism. Doesn't matter which one is you call, you could call this is your length, this is your height, then this is my width. Either way, one of those is your dy. There's your volume for that particular, that particular cylinder, and of course, I have many cylinders in there. I have another one right here. Its radius is a different y. Its thickness of the wall is the same. It's still a dy. Its height is dependent on where you are on this function and where I'm at on the y squared. So it also has to do with y squared. So the, that's just one cylinder. All the cylinders would be the integral of 2 pi y, y squared dy. The limits are, where are your radii changing? Radii is starting at zero. If I have a cylinder right here, it has no, no cylinder there. That's why it's a zero radius. But as I go all the way up to the top, this at the top one, that cylinder has the radius of square root of 2. So the setup is relatively simple. And I mentioned in class that most of your shell problems will be nothing other than 2 pi from A to B where the radius goes. Always going to have the letter Y in this case. And then always have my F of Y dy. Most of them will be that. Now, the, the one that I was doing a minute ago with that jello mold, 
there's a difference in there because the the y the radius doesn't start at zero. So I can't just use the y. It could also be two pi a b x f of x dx. So there's that. Let's see. That turns into I'm gonna pull out the two pi zero to square root of two y cubed dy. That turns into y to the fourth over four, of course, times two pi. And that is going to go from 0 to square root of 2. I don't know if I need to take the time to actually finish it up. But uh, why not? I got nothing but time. 2 pi. I just don't want to give you an hour video. Um, square root of 2 to the 4th power over 4 minus the 0, plugging it in gives you 2 pi square root of 2 times square root of 2 is a 2 times another square root of 2 times square root of 2 gives you another 2. It gives you a 4. gives you 4 out of 4. So that just gives you uh, 2 pi. Okay. Volumes using cylindrical shells, again, this one is also was in the textbook. They were easier than the first example in the book. This one is obviously going around the y-axis. He didn't draw it. And my cylinders would be vertical in this case. So why don't I take a pause and try to copy that picture on the other side to make it look better? Okay. There's my duplicate. Attach it to the other side. And you can see very clearly what I was telling you that obviously as these go around, that's just a pure solid cylinder. It's a pure solid cylinder, even at the base. But when you get to this point right here, that's the last pure solid cylinder we're going to have. Now, this is going to create a cylinder that has a hole in it. The old disc washer method, you'd have to have done this by cutting it up into two parts. The solid cylinder all the way up to here, and then you'd have to break it up to a partial uh, where you have to subtract the two functions. So that's why in this case, believe it or not, washer method is, is actually uh, an easier method to do. And again, as you look down, you may not see that it's completely open because this part is solid, so it filled it in. So you're going to still see a possible blue um, disc, uh, a cylinder in there, but there's a shade difference because it's going deeper, and and then all of a sudden it hits solid right here. Let's let, let's think about the un, when I unwrap this cylinder and I make this rectangle. No matter where you go, no matter no matter where you're going, the radiuses are always a function of x. I mean, always an x. The height of that cylinder will always be from zero to this top function. So it's just, this is another perfect example where volume is going to be, that was my 2 pi x, because the radius is always x. This is always going to be the function f of x. Okay, and the thicknesses will always be dx. So my volume will be 2 pi integrate from 0 to square root of 2. And my, this is 2 pi, here's my x. My f of x was x is the, let's see what it is, the function, 
oh, y equals x squared of x squared plus 1. Square root, oh, square root, why isn't it writing for me? Please write. Square root of x squared plus 1 inside the radical. And dx was my thickness of the wall. Okay, does that make sense? X squared plus 1, yep. All right, this is not as easy to integrate because I can't merge the x inside. And so there's two separate functions. So you're always supposed to do, think about u, u substitution. u equals to the inside of this function. Let's check it out. If that's true, my du would have to exist as a 2x dx. And it does. There's the 2. If I shove it back inside, there's the x. There's the dx. So I'm going to do this two ways. One way is the way that I do without talking about the limits. I'm now having a pi still outside, and I'm not going to put equals because I'm not going to put limits. Okay, e, I'm going to turn it into an indefinite integral. Uh, x, 2x dx becomes my, my du, and my u is nothing more than, that's my u, u to the one-half power. So the antiderivative just is pi u to the 3 halves divided by th 3 halves plus c. I have no limits in there at all. So what I would do if I was just lazy and I don't want to mess with my limits, I would resubstitute back into the u. 2 pi over 3, u was, was uh, x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves. Now I can go back to, I uh, should not put equal, now I'm going back to my original limits from 0 to square root of 3. Is that what it was? Can't remember. Yeah. Goes up to 0 to square root, square root of 3. So now I can just plug in those limits and say 2 pi over 3. Then I have a squ uh, square root of 3 is an x, so it's square root of 3 squared plus 1 to the 3 halves minus, plug in the 0. 0 squared plus 1 is a 1 to the 3 halves. 2 pi over 3 equals to a 3 plus 1. That's 4 to the 3 halves minus 1. This turns into 2 pi over 3. The square root, the, when the denominator is a 2, you're doing the square root of 4 is 2. 2 to the 3rd is 8 minus 1. That gives me a 7. So that turns into 14 pi over 3. All right. That's when I didn't mess with my limits. But let's do it again just to sh see. You can decide which is easier. You do have to know how to change those limits. By using this, pi integrate u to the half du, that still turns, and my limits now, I have to change them. Because my limit was a 0, so I technically got to say, well, what it is in terms of u? If I plug it into here, 0 squared plus 1 is still a 1. If I plug in my upper limit of square root of 2 into here, uh, a square root of 2 squared is 2, plus 1 is 3, so it's 1 to 3. See how my limits changed if I stick with the u? Here, I, I put it back into x's, so I just use my original limits. So now I'm going to do uh, u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, from 1 to 3. Plug in the, th the, th the th 3. I don't know if it was. Was it a 1 to 3? It was square root of 3, wasn't it? No, 1 to 3. Let me double check my work. 0 squared, that's a 1. Square root of 2 squared. Oh, it's a 2, but I have the... 
plus one, it is a three. Hmm. I think I didn't read my own handwriting. This is a square root of three. Plugging it in, square root of three is three. Plus one is four, it should be a four, okay. I thought it wasn't looking right because it should have came out nice and basic. All right, thank you for somebody helping me out. I know you're doing it in, in, your, in your mind. So if I put a four here, square root of four is two, two to the third is eight. That gives me eight. Let me do that. Let me pull out the two two thirds first. Two thirds pi. There's that pi up there. I forgot that one. Two thirds pi. Now again, I plug in that four. I get eight. Plug in the one. I get well, same my, one square root of one is one. One cubed is one. I get a one. I still get a seven times two thirds pi, which is the same answer. 14 thirds pi. Okay. Kind of like that problem in a way because because you got to do a little bit of heavier integrating than we did on the other problem. That was just from the book. And uh, again, as I said, that if you're lucky, your radius will always be x and you'll always have a f of x and you'll always have a dx. But it could happen that you get the 2 pi from a to b of a y of an f of y and a dy. It just depends on the rotation. The first problem that I looked at from the cover page was this one here. And I was trying to explain to the class why you couldn't use just the disk method. So I'm going to just make one disk. And if I draw it, that disk looks like that. And the problem is the big radius, the big radius, big one, R, R would be this function that's on the wall on the back, which was the equation of 3x squared, 3x minus x squared would technically be, that big radius would be 3x minus x squared from this number, which is a negative 1, so I do that, minus 1. Okay. And the little radius, unfortunately, is exactly the same function. So your little radius is also 3x minus x squared minus 1. It's the same. So you can't use disk and washer method with this bad boy. You have to use shell. But once you know. So looking at this, I'm going to draw the same shell he has. He's even telling you that the distance that you go up is just a y distance. It's just a y distance. And I'm telling you that that thickness of that wall is a dx. And so you go up to that y, however high you're going, That's going to be, that's not your radius, that's the height, I'm sorry, that's the height of the, whatever y you go up is the height of that cylinder. And the radius of that cylinder always starts at the negative 1, goes all the way over to whatever x value you were at that gave you the that height. If you were not going that big, that's the biggest uh that's a pretty big uh, cylinder, but you could have another cylinder out here. You could literally have uh, one that's even up to here. Notice what that one's going to look like, just for kicks. I wish I could draw like the guy did in that other video. He's so good. 
there's that radius. The height is more because the functional value is higher. And the radius is also longer. Okay. But it's still a DX wall. And it's still a height. It's still the function, which was uh, 3X minus X squared, I think. Is that what I said? Yes. The height is still the same. That's the same. And the radius is still the right side, which is this X, whatever X value, minus minus 1. So going into the formula, volume is going to be, I'll pull out my 2 pi, integrate. My radius is starting at a negative 1, and it goes all the way to 3. No, it doesn't. <laughs> there's, there's no cylinders here. It's all air. I don't need to... I don't need to put that as a limit, negative 1. The true uh, uh, R of the solid actually starts at the 0. Because that's where that function goes out. So let me fix that. Z uh, 0 to 3. All right. And I don't think I'm going to finish it all. I'll let you realize that. That's 2 pi, 2 pi uh, r times h, 2 pi r h, and there was a thickness, 2 pi r h. It was just a d, in this case, it's a dx. I'm going to put that there. So 2 pi r is that distance. So to get to this wall, it is a it is an, an an x value minus minus one to get this whole distance here. That is my r. That's x plus one. And then my height is up to the function, which is three x minus x squared, and my thickness still is the wall of dx. Two pi zero to three. Distribute 3x squared minus x cubed plus 3x minus x squared is what it is. x plus 1. 3x squared minus x cubed plus 3x minus x squared. Simplify it, 2 pi, 0, 2, 3. I'll put my negative x cubed first, put those two together, make it plus 2x squared. Then there's that plus 3x. Equals 2 pi, negative x to the fourth over 4, plus... 2x cubed over 3 plus 3x squared over 2, 0 to 3 equals 2 pi. That's a negative 81 fourths. That's a, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. That's a 54 thirds plus a 9, 27 halves. Oh, wow, 100. 3 times 3 is 9 times 27. 27 to 2 is 54, yeah. I'd pick up your calculator probably by now. Let's see. Just go to the next page and see what we got. We have the answer there. And should be getting 45 halves. Hopefully. So, I'll let you finish that up. It sounds great. Look at that. looks the same. And 
as long as that probably is the same. Double check. Just let me know. All right. Another problem in the book. Gave this, that was only example one. That hard one was example one. Region bounded by y equals square root of x. Well, that's typical. And the x-axis. So I want and the x-axis. So it's that function, the x-axis. Wrong axis. Hello. Wake up. This function and the x-axis, that one here, and the line x equals to 4. I'll just arbitrarily call this to be um, 4. Oh, I have the wrong, wrong pen. We'll call that x equals to 4. That region is going to be revolved around the y-axis. So it's going to create the reflection. Uh, let me pause it and make a reflection for you. Abracadabra. It's flipped, relatively flipped. I cut a little piece off, but you got the idea. And the top will make a revolution. Those you can see my cylinders. Starts at the four. Would be the biggest cylinder that you could slip on over it. Reminding you there could be smaller cylinders in here. Right? Since it's vertical and it is going around the y, we know that's zero. We know every radius is going out to an x value. We know that every thickness of the wall is a dx. We know the height of that cylinder goes up from the zero, the x-axis, to the function y is the square root of x. And since that distance is in terms of y equals, then I already have my equation. I don't have to uh, solve it for x. Volume is 2 pi from, this time my radius is, they meet here at the zero, and they go all the way out to four. And it's just an x value, and it is the square root of x dx. Well, this one's a lot easier to integrate than that last problem. Two pi, zero to four, x to the half times x to the one is x to the three halves dx. We integrate that, two pi, integrate zero to four of x to the Five, what am I doing there? I didn't have, why am I writing the problem out again? I'm supposed to have integrated it. Two pi times x to the five halves divided by five halves from zero to four. That's four fifths pi x to the five halves over over nothing. I pulled a 5 out. That makes it easier. Obviously, 0 makes it go away, so 4 fifths pi times 4 to the 5 halves. And when you take the halves of a half power of 4, it's a square root of 4, it's a 2. 2 to the 5 is 32, so I'm left with 32 times 4 fifths pi. And that would be 8 12, 128, 5, 128 fifths of pi. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Pictures, though. I do like the 3D illustration. Do you see what I was saying about you only have the wall as that piece is going around? You only have the thickness of the wall. That's a good picture looking from the top. Mm -hmm. 1 25th pi over 5. There it is. I do like it. That was 128 pi over 5. Okay, example 3. I don't have a cleaner. I just have this one picture. The region bounded by the same function y is square root of x the x-axis and the line x equals to 4 is revolved around the x-axis. Okay. So 
there's zero to four, there's the square root, there's the four, there's the, this is gonna go around this way. Oh, it's that bullet. It's that bullet that we've talked about. And, uh, but we're doing this, we've done this problem before. We did it with the, uh, the disk method. And so, you know, we'll do it both ways just because we can. And, you know, it is Saturday. It is time to get excited and have a party. So we'll party by doing this problem twice. Does that sound good? So shell method means that I have this cylinder in here. And the only thing that's creating mass is that wall. And if you put another cylinder out there, I'll put a longer one, it's, it's, it's going to be a more narrower of a cylinder. However, the thickness is the same. So the radii start at uh, zero and they go, they keep going out. So the radius is just a function of y. The height now does depend on two functions. The height of this cylinder is the line x equals to four, x equals to four, and the line or in the function, uh, this x, which comes from this function, uh, he already he already uh, solved it for x. He already solved it f for x. It's uh, four minus y squared is the, the whole distance. That's the function he gave me was the square root, but that's x equals to y squared. Okay, so let's set it up. Volume is two pi. My radii is starting here at zero and going all the way up to that value, however high I go. And uh, if you plug in uh, the, if you plug in uh, this x being four and you plug it into the y equals square root of four, it'd be a two. And it says it right there, two. Zero to two. The y value is my radius. The height is the four minus uh, y squared, because y was square root of x, x equals to y squared, and dy. Okay, here it goes. Volume is 2 pi, integrate 0 to 2, uh, 4y minus y cubed, dy, 2 pi, 0 to 2. I don't need to simplify more. Go 2 pi of 4y squared over 2. That's 2y squared minus y to the fourth over 4. Going from 0 to 2. 2 pi y to the squared is, 2 to the squared is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, minus 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, 16 over 4 is 4, answer is uh, 4 times 8 pi. Let's see if we're right. That one, all that work. I never did say cylindrical shells was the easiest method. It's 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 not, but in some cases it's the only way to do a problem. Like that like the book example number 1. You could only do that with shells, but in the 8 pi. Here was oh I missed something. 8 pi. Here that one. The problem that we just did here. We could do it two different ways. All right, enough to know. Bye-bye. Okay, there it is. And so, if I take this picture and rotate it, 
there is your hockey puck. It has a thickness we call DX. And it ha every disc has a radius R, which is the function. Because you're just going up. And I don't have to solve this for X. So Y was equal to the, the square root of X. So volume would be, remember what we do? We do uh, pi r squared h. That We're doing a accumulation of uh, cylinders. So this is going to, zero volume will be 0 to 4 of the square, of the, of, oh, I lost my pi, square root of x squared dx. That turns into pi square root from 0 to 4 of, what do I say? Integrate from 0 to 4 of just plain x dx, which turns into pi x squared over 2 from 0 to 4, which is uh, pi times 16 over 2 minus 0, which is 8 pi. Well, that was a lot easier than how we did it right. There's your summary of the show. Uh, textbook homework, uh, similar to the first couple that I had done. Three problems back to just problems. Another four across the x-axis, another four across the y-axis. I want to, and then you got two problems that take the same picture, like we did that last two problems with the same picture, rotated about two different things. Well, you get the same picture. Rotated, uh, rotated around six different things. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. I wanted to do that last problem, the bullet, using the disk method. So let me go back.